What's up you guys? What is going on? And welcome back to another post-match report, you could call it. I don't know what the title of this video is going to be. It's, it's, <laughs> I don't assume it's going to have, in uh, quotation marks, uh, emotional at the start. But wow, wee, what a video that was. Um, that was just, you know, every time I, I actually rewatched that, I'd, I'd still well up with tears because that message that I conveyed in that last video, you know, where I got emotional at the end, that is, that is my truth. Um, that is my truth. That has been my mission, um, you know, to live with no regrets because a life live with, lived with regrets is a, is, a, is, a, is a torturous life and a life that I'm just, just not willing to, to live actually. So let's get into the match report. Um, this is uh, week number two of the 2020 Canterbury Metro Rugby Division 2 competition. Littleton, the Littleton Dolphins is the team that I play for. Uh, Littleton was my uh, club when I was younger, when I played as a kid. You know, all these times, if you've seen me talk about um, on any of these videos about my old, you know, rugby playing days, that's where it all happened over in Littleton. And um, that's where I was determined if I was going to play rugby here in Christchurch to play. And that's what we've done. So, you know, luck's been on my side. I managed to get a starting spot for the first game. I also managed to get a starting spot for the second game. You know, the reason why is because I went to training um, both days. You know, there's guys who started in the first game who didn't turn up to training, who then lost their starting spot. So clearly, you know, you've, you've got to turn up to training to give yourself a spot. Doesn't matter what sort of sport you're playing, doesn't matter what team you're in. If you don't turn up, then nothing's possible. But it doesn't matter how shit you're feeling, the most important thing, is to turn up. And turn up, I'm happy to say, we did. Uh, the team won 29 points to nil, so that's our first donut, our first clean sheet of the, of the, the year, which is fantastic. Um, you know, we almost got one the week before, but uh, yeah, this week we got it over the line, so that's, that's amazing. The weather uh, was absolutely shocking. It's the worst you know, the worst weather I've ever, ever played a game of rugby in. Absolutely. I mean, for the last 10 years I've been in Australia where, you know, well, a part of Australia where you're, you're lucky to see 10 days of rain in one year. So, you know, I played in 20 degrees, I played in 40 degrees, but there was definitely no rain. But what we experienced on the weekend was torrential rain, not only for the day of the game, but the day before it and the day before that and the day after it. So the, the ground was uh, wet underfoot, you could say. It's definitely an understatement. And once again, you know, handling errors crept into the game because of the wet ball. That's just what happens. And uh, not only that, but also when I go to step or go to, you know, change direction suddenly or accelerate suddenly, whether that's out of the line or whether that's with the ball or whether that's, you know, wherever on the field, my footing was de was definitely dicey. Uh, it was dicey at best. So before the game, you know, I, I, I actually had a, a bit of a realization. I started looking around at everyone's boots, right? Now we're in Christchurch. This is where the ground can be wet. Most likely is going to be wet. It's winter. It's winter in Christchurch in New Zealand, which is the country that is, well, it's probably going to be the coldest country in the Southern Hemisphere if we're, you know, looking at geography. So anyway, the weather, can you imagine this? Okay, you've got cross rain, or cross winds, you've got rain bucketing down, going across ways, it's probably like 5 degrees Celsius, it's icy cold, you know, the, the, the ball, the, the handling's not there, you, as a back, as an outside back, uh, we didn't get a lot of ball, but I will say that on defence, our back line really, really worked in sync, we worked well, and we shut down their back line completely. I don't know if they passed it out maybe one or two times and uh, to their outside backs, but apart from that, we defended really well. So that's good. We kept it nice and nice and close, and that's what you need to do on a day like that. Uh, our forwards, you know, are amazing. Our forwards have uh, are in sync. Yeah, the team have been, has clearly been playing together for a few years, and I, I've just come in literally, you know, the rookie, you know, literally uh, out of nowhere and tried to play a role in this team and so far so good I guess uh, but anyways let's get on to my individual performance now before we um, before we continue this is the elephant in the room yeah I've got a little cut there but that's nothing um, I actually yeah about five minutes into the game went for a big tackle uh, tackled him made the tackle thank god but 
you know, in doing that, I don't know what happened, we, we fell to the ground, I got up, and I kind of felt this little, you know, a bit of a numb sensation on my chin after, a, you know, a couple of minutes, and I thought, what, what is that? And I started touching it, and then all this blood was on my fingers. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I've definitely done something. Uh, I'd actually thought that my tooth had, you know, cut, I, I thought my tooth had come through my fucking chin. I don't know what I was thinking. I was out there, I was like, oh my god, I've just fucking, I've just gone and done something really, really shit. And I don't know what it is. Anyways, um, played on for about 5-10 minutes, and then the blood was like going down, you know, my chin and um, everywhere. So what they do in rugby, they call a blood bin. I got taken off after about 15 minutes. I got this massive bandage, right, <laughs> taped right around my head. It was the only thing that they could do to keep like a pad in place on that whilst I played. So luckily, for those who've been following along at home, <laughs> I bought myself a headgear, right? I thought I was going to use it, ended up not wanting to use it. This was perfect. So I had the tape around, went and grabbed my headgear, put it on, strapped myself up, and five minutes later I was back on the field. And I'm happy to say I played the remainder of the game. But a crucial moment, I'll never forget this. Last video I talked about the, the first touch that I had, um, I boosted into the defensive line and I'll never forget it because it was a, a great moment. Yeah, this was, uh, well, certainly a moment, not so great. Um, could have had my first try. Should have had my first try. Would have had my first try if I had have just trusted myself. But, what happened was, uh, at about the 40 meter line, we were on defense in their half. So they were 40 meters out from their try line. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a line out. The line out was all good. They passed it to their halfback. The halfback passed it out to the 10. I'm at center. By the way, if I haven't mentioned that, I played center this game. In the last game, I played right wing, uh, number 14. In this game, I played center. So that's number 13, which means I'm one position further in from the sideline, which also means that you know you put in more hits, you get more ball, you have a bit more action. But what that also means is that when the opposition kicks the ball down the field, you're going to be still up in the line. You're not going to be dropping back like those wingers and that fullback does. So for counter-attack, it's not so good. In games like this, with weather like this, there ain't no fucking counter-attack going on. Well, there is, but it's slow, it's sluggish. The passes are not going to be able to be fired off as far and as fast as uh, normal. So... It's just a different game, but it's it's a fun game, certainly a fun game, and, and getting the win, getting the, the donut, you know, 29 nil was fucking awesome. It was really great, great feeling, great feeling. So yeah, with, with the try, um, the 10 passed it out to the 12. I'm pretty sure the pass was shocking, right? So the pass went way behind the 12. I saw that, you know, they were coming up, obviously, they had to turn and retreat, at the same time that I was actually on the burst, so obviously I got past them. I kicked the ball through, which we call, you know, a grubber kick in the game of uh, rugby. It's like just a soccer kick, it's basically like kicking a soccer ball along the ground, but it's a rugby ball. And also, you know, that means that the bounce can do anything. You just don't know what's going to happen. Anyways, the, the, the kick was pretty much perfect. I kicked it through, ran onto it. No defender was within, you know, 10, 20 meters. I didn't know that at the time. You know, my adrenaline's racing. I kicked the ball through. I'm rushing forward. Everyone's cheering. About two meters out from the line, I realize, okay, well, the ball is not going to make it over that try line. I'm going to need to either kick it again, pick it up, or dive on it and slide. And believe it or not, because of the fact that I have not played a game in the rain and been able to slide along the ground for the last 10 years, that did not even enter my mind. Whereas everyone else on the field, everyone watching, was expecting me to just dive on that ball and slide the two meters to the try line and probably about 10 meters, you know, further on. I didn't even think about it. I thought, <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I thought, nah, you don't slide along the ground. But clearly in games like this, you do. And in times like that, I should have. Anyways, guys. <laughs> oh, it reminded me of a time when uh, we were playing a, a basketball match and I went up for a dunk and completely fucked it. I got a fast break, thought this is my moment to slam a dunk down in front of a home crowd. Absolutely fucked it. And, uh, well, lo and behold, I fucked this try too. So I went down, tried to pick it up. It slipped right through my fingers because of the weather. And uh, it was a knock-on. And uh, so, yeah. I still remember the roar. The roar of the crowd went up, 
right? To celebrate the try. And it took maybe half a second or a second for them to realize that it was a knock-on. And, uh, well, the roar went into a, an even bigger roar of, I don't know if it was laughter, disappointment, or, yeah, I don't know, bro. But anyways, anyways, crucial moment happened five seconds after that. Five seconds. I heard the roar, I felt the disappointment, and then I got up. And I completely brushed it off. Completely brushed it off. I said to myself, you know what? Shit happens. I've been telling all these guys throughout this game, and the last game, if they drop a pass, if they fuck something up, next task. That's what I like to say, next task. I've heard it throughout my rugby career, rugby years from different coaches, and it's next task. It's like, what are you gonna do? There's no point in getting down on yourself. You know, when your confidence levels start to drop in, in any game, any sport, that can really start to negative, negatively affect you on the, on the field. And you know, the mental part of any sports game is huge. It's, it's, it's up to the player. I think it's up to the coach to, to well, I guess encourage the player as much as possible. Once you get to a certain point, once you get to a certain age, honestly, you know, being 29 now, if I was 21 and I did that, I'd probably hate myself for it. Well, f you know, probably for the rest of the game at least. But in this moment, at this point, at a home game, could have been my first try. It was a really shit moment, guys, for five seconds. And then I said to myself, nah, get up. You've got a, a scrum in their half, five meters out, you never know what's going to happen. Next task, mate. Next task. Make a big hit. Make a tackle. Do something. Get back in the game. You know what I mean? As fast as possible to try and brush that off. And that's exactly what happened, man. So I'm so happy to, to report that even though that happened, uh, you know, the rest of the game was all right. The handling errors were there. I dropped the ball cold once. Probably wasn't going to do much with the ball, but... As it was passed to me, classic moment, you know, take a quick look at the defense. Usually when someone drops a ball cold, it's because they've taken a look at the defense. They've had a quick look at where they're going to, to, to suss out, right, once I've grabbed this ball, that's where I'm going. And usually, just like what happened this time, you know, you take too long of a look and it ends up with a mistake. So anyways, guys, fantastic game, loved it. Uh, I thought I'd show you my shorts. Um, I thought I'd just show you my shorts, um, just finally. You know, here they are, they're completely covered in mud. <laughs> it's, it's Tuesday today. It's Tuesday today, so I did mention my chin, but I don't think I mentioned what happened after the game. So yeah, after the game, I went to the emergency department. All the local medical centers were closed. I got three stitches in my chin. Uh, it's the first stitches I've had for probably, yeah, 15 years, I think. And, uh, well, the anesthetic fucking stung like a bitch. I'm not going to lie. But it's, it's all good. So today is actually Tuesday. It's, you know, training is, is back again. You play, you train Tuesday, Thursday, play a game on Saturday. You know, what I will say is that after the first game, I got through it pretty much scot-free. My body felt perfect. After this game, well, actually, no, it didn't feel perfect. My, my leg was pretty sore. But in this game, I took a fair few more hits. Big hits. I tackled a couple more people. Um, and I definitely got one right underneath my ribs. So right there, that hurts. That definitely hurts to even touch. And Sunday morning and yesterday morning, when I went to go get out of bed or when I go to, you know, sit up from lying down, basically, that's when it's worst. It hurt like hell. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Is it a bruised rib? Is it a cracked rib? I don't believe it's a cracked rib because it's actually getting better already. Um, and if it was cracked or badly bruised, I think I'd be pretty fucked for a while but it is coming right as far as my legs go I got a few cuts and bruises scrapes and I don't know yeah on my face as well but that's rugby for you that's division two Christchurch rugby and you know I've just injected myself right back into it but I am loving it and uh, it's a challenge and uh, uh, it's also a dream it's not a dream but it's a it's a goal that I've had for a long time and it's just right it's the right time it's it's i'm here in new zealand it's uh it's one of the only sports one of the only sporting leagues that's that's even on at the moment i feel blessed to be here i feel really really lucky to be here really really lucky to be presented with the opportunity to be playing for this this team um having a starting role as well and uh you know on from here so that's two wins two games two wins uh no tries <laughs> probably, about, probably about 10 tackles and um yeah, not many meters to speak of just yet. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, for some dry weather in the next match. But what that also means is that 
you know, the other team have the ability to spin the ball wide and, and play at their maximum, you know, um, ability level, which, which just makes the game all that more exciting. So the weather is definitely a factor. The weather is always a factor in the game. Rugby, even just wind, not even, you know, not only rain, but wind. If you're playing into the wind, obviously it's the same in football. If you're trying to kick the ball, it basically takes away your kicking game. You've got to keep the ball on the ground and, uh, you know, vice versa. So anyways, guys, that's enough uh, rugby talk for me, but I have really enjoyed it and I hope you guys have too. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me, guys. <sighs> Who knows what's next? I certainly don't. <laughs> Peace out, guys.